Hi students, welcome to um, the chapter 8 lecture. We're going to be talking about mitosis and meiosis, which I hope these subjects are familiar to you. Uh, if they are, this should just be a nice refresher for you. Okay, so what I hope to cover with this lecture includes um, accomplishments of mitosis and meiosis. So what are they useful for? Um, I'm going to cover chromosomes, the cell cycle, mitosis and cytokinesis, which are part of the cell cycle but not the entire cell cycle, meiosis, crossing over, problems that can occur with mitosis and meiosis, which include cancer and non-disjunction, and we're going to conclude with an evolutionary connection. Okay, so why do we need cell division, also known as mitosis? Well, we need to replace damaged or lost cells, and millions of these divisions occur in your body every second. This involves the production of brand new cells. And a great example of this are keratinized um, epidermal cells. So your outer layer of skin, of course, is constantly in contact with the environment, and especially um, the outer skin on your hands and feet are going to need to be replaced. Um, the skin cells there are going to need to be replaced. So that's a great example of um, lost and damaged cells. And then, of course, for growth. So cells divide to allow an organism to grow. And this process starts at fertilization. Here are just a couple of visual representations of functions of cell division. So for example, this is a human kidney cell undergoing mitosis here. You can see the nuclear material um, is somewhat split down the middle, so this is in the process of becoming two cells from one parent cell. And then this is an example of growth via cell division. So in this case, we have an early human embryo, and these are individual cells. So it's a very early human embryo that has just started to divide. And other accomplishments of cell division, um, asexual reproduction, which is the same process that our skin cells go through. Basically, it's still mitosis, where you're just making a copy of a parent cell so what happens here is the lone parent and its offspring have identical genes. And then sexual reproduction, which is accomplished by a different type of cell division called meiosis. And then once, um, once meiosis has produced the sperm and egg cells and those sperm and egg cells fuse, mitosis occurs, which is just that um, cell division and growth for example, this. So this process here would be mitosis because the sperm and egg had already come together and it started out as a single cell and now it's um, growing through division. And this is just to show that there are different types of reproductive strategies depending on the organism. We have asexual reproduction um, for, an ex for example, division of an amoeba, um, regeneration of a sea star. What happened here is um, this larger sea star lost this arm that was here. That was its original arm here, and that original arm grew into basically another complete sea star that has the same genome as this one and then this existing sea star regrew that arm that it lost. So that's a pretty cool strategy. Um, this also occurs with salamanders. They can regrow limbs. And then we have growth of a clipping here. So there are many different plants. Um, if you just take a clipping of that plant and provide it with suitable nutrients and a soil base and water, um, a complete plant will grow from that clipping. And then we have, of course, sexual reproduction. This is a sperm cell here that is penetrating an egg cell and 
um, fertilization is occurring, and that is a close-up of this process. Okay, so in a eukaryotic cell, most genes are located on chromosomes in the cell's nucleus, and a few genes are found in DNA within mitochondria. This is referred to as mitochondrial DNA, as well as chloroplasts. So what exactly is a chromosome? Well, eukaryotic chromosomes contain one very long DNA molecule, which typically bears thousands of genes. So a chromosome is basically just a long strand of DNA. And that strand of DNA encodes for many different genes that will have um, some sort of physical manifestation. They're probably going to be expressed. And there'll also be um, some unexpressed genes in there as well. So um, this genetic information is packed very tightly within a chromosome, and the number of chromosomes varies among species. Here we have the DNA double helix with histones, which are special proteins kind of looks like beads on a string. One um, bundle is called a nucleosome. Um, this DNA strand along with the histones are packed into tight helical fibers. This section here would be referred to as a thick supercoil. The centromere is where um, those two copies of a chromosome are going to be joined at. So this would be um, a duplicated chromosome, and each side would be a sister chromatid. And then if you're actually looking through a microscope at, for example, um, a slide of an onion undergoing mitosis, which is a very common slide to look at if you're a college student studying biology, um, this is what that that cell is actually going to look like. So this is a complete plant cell here with a cell wall around it, and this is DNA that has been super um, tightly packed in here. So these strands are individual chromosomes. Okay, so like I said, the number of chromosomes within somatic cells, which are also known as body cells, varies among species. So the Indian muntjac deer, for example, only has six chromosomes. Humans have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs. This red vis visacha rat here has 102 chromosomes. So as you can see, the number of chromosomes does not correspond with the species size or complexity. Okay, let's talk about the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is just the ordered sequence of events from the time a cell is first formed to its own division into two cells. So this would be, um, for example, for the time a cell is first formed, that would be when that sperm and egg cell come together and um, combine to form a complete human genome. It would be from that time to the time that those cells are mature and undergo division themselves. And there are two distinct phases of the cell cycle. There's interphase, and then there's the mitotic phase. So most of a cell's time is simply spent in interphase. This is the non-dividing stage of the cell cycle. The cell's normal metabolism occurs, and growth occurs. And a typical cell will spell will spend 90% of its time in interphase. Interphase, in turn, is made up of G1 for GAP1, S phase, which stands for synthesis, when chromosomes are duplicated. Here we have a single chromosome. During the S phase, it undergoes duplication, and it becomes two sister chromatids. G2 is the GAP2 phase. And then the mitotic, or M phase, is when cell division actually occurs. And this is only about 10% of the time um, for a typical cell. 
So during interphase, a cell performs its normal functions. Everything within its cytoplasm is going to double and it's going to grow in size. Before a cell divides, which is during interphase, it duplicates all of its chromosomes, resulting in two copies called sister chromatids containing identical genes. And when the cell actually divides, which is mitosis, the sister chromatids of a duplicated chromosome separate from each other. So in order to make two cells from one cell, what do you have to do? You have to duplicate all of that cell's DNA because if you do not duplicate all of that cell's DNA, the daughter cells are going to end up with half of the original cell's DNA. And we don't want that. We want the complete complement of that cell's DNA. So it has to basically double every single chromosome, every single gene within that nucleus before it can divide. Mitosis is the division of one nucleus into two genetically identical daughter nuclei. So mitosis is kind of um, informally referred to as cell division, but when you get down right to the details, mitosis is actually just the division of the nucleus itself. But if you divide the nucleus after all of that DNA has been duplicated, that's pretty much all that needs to occur for that cell to be a functioning um, cell because it's going to have all of that DNA that was in the original parent cell. And mitosis consists of four distinct phases. And you can remember this by PMAT. So these are the phases of mitosis in order. There's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Cytokinesis is not, strictly speaking, part of mitosis. It's the division of the cytoplasm that occurs um, quickly after or during telophase. All right, so during prophase, each chromosome exists as identical sister chromatids that are attached at their centromeres. And the centromere, you can just kind of think of as the place where these sister chromatids are joined at the hip. Um, during prophase, the nuclear envelope disintegrates. So this envelope that is surrounding all of that DNA is going to break away. It needs to break away um, in order for those chromosomes to um, become attached to the spindle fibers here. So the spindle microtubules are going to reach out essentially and attach themselves to the centromeres. So we've got spindle microtubules attached to each sister chromatid. During metaphase, the chromosomes align in the middle of the cell like this, and the microtubules are pulling those chromosomes towards each pole. They're actually just shortening in length so they end up carrying these sister chromatids with them. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate, and as soon as those chromatids are separated from one another, as you see here, they are now once again considered full-fledged chromosomes. Some microtubules shorten to pull chromosomes, and some lengthen to push the poles of the cell further apart. During telophase, the nuclear envelopes reform around the, the uh, duplicated genetic material and the chromosomes uncoil. A furrow pinches the cell in two and produces two daughter cells. So this pinching apart here is this point is called the cleavage furrow. And then cytokinesis occurs, which is a division of the cytoplasm. So all of that fluid and other organelles um, within the cell divides. And this basically occurs along with telophase, but is not technically part of mitosis. A 
fun fact here. Um, I don't know how many of you are 